Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to show you a bunch of different options of plants you can put in your garden that have purple leaves. These are all so beautiful and I have something in every category here. We've got a tree, shrubs, perennials, annuals. I'm gonna be planting a few of these out in the landscape today so you'll get to see where they go and the others you'll see later on in other projects. But I just had to gather them all together so you could see how beautiful these are. I mean, purple plants, they bring such interest, such depth and weight to an area. I mean, you can have a garden all full of green and I like all green gardens too if the texture is done. I mean, you really have to play up the textures in that case and the different colors of green. But if you've got a garden space where you're not you know, worried about keeping one color of foliage, adding something like this in is just so beautiful and brings such drama. When I was growing up, um, kind of learning about the elements of garden design. I mean, I don't know a lot about it because I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. Um, but my mom always told me when you are designing a space, unless you're going for a specific theme or a monochromatic look, always try to hit four colors, get green, blue, red, and yellow in there. So these plants will fall in the red category in that case. So you can go with a cool red like these, kind of purple or burgundy, or you can go more warm red, uh, which I like as well. So let's start with the tree because this one we're actually putting in the ground today. This is a red obelisk beech right here. Such beautiful structure on this plant. I love the color of the bark here. In fact, it kind of turns a silver color so it's really pretty winter interest. And this is going in our west side garden so it can't get enormous. And you'll see here, the tag says it gets 35 by 12. Most other places will tell you it gets 40 by 10. Some places tell me it gets 10 to 12 by three. <laughs> so either way, it stays more narrow and it's incredibly slow growing. So I don't even know that I would see this get to 40 feet. <laughs> which is perfect for the area I'm gonna put it because it just, I need that red um, or the purple kind of difference, I guess, because I got a lot of green going on over where I'm gonna put it, but I can't have it be something that gets really big. So a zone five and just these gorgeous dark colored leaves. So all of the things I'm showing you today, including this want sun or can take sun except for two, which can go either way, sun or shade. So this one is a sun lover. Uh, in the beach family, we do have some tricolor beach here, which are more on the pink side. Uh, they can't handle quite as much sun as the darker leaved beaches can. Uh, so this one should be happy where it's going. Uh, in terms of shrubs, I'm gonna come back over here. We have a summer wine nine bark, which when you put it up next to all these other purple plants, you can definitely tell this one has much more green in it, but you get it out in the landscape and get it up next to green stuff and you will see how much deeper in color this is. Look at the blooms, absolutely gorgeous. Five to eight feet tall and wide. They have this kind of natural vase shape about them and they're one that you kind of want to put where you can just let them grow to their full size so that you don't have to prune on them because when you prune on them, they have a really hard time recovering and kind of getting that shape back. This one is a zone three through seven and it's really resistant to powdery mildew, which I don't know if you've ever grown nine barks before, but there are some varieties that even here in our dry climate, we struggle with powdery mildew. So having ones that can handle that is really great. They can also handle high pH. They're very adaptable to crummy soil. They do like average moisture, but they are more drought tolerant once they are established. So if you have an area where, or you live in an area where water is restricted or that's a concern, um, which you know here we try to be as efficient with watering as we can. And you know, adding stuff like this in is great too because it just doesn't require as much. Next, and this might be one of my, I can't say favorites of this load of plants, but it's definitely one that we use a lot in this area. This is a black lace elderberry. In fact, we've done a whole spotlight video just on black lace elderberry. One of our neighbors has full grown black lace elderberries, like a whole bunch of them up on this like a uh, berm. And we went over there. They let us come over when they were in full bloom so that we could show you what they look like. Now, these I think are a zone three through seven, very winter hardy tough with any kind of soil, pH or type of soil. Uh, the tags say they get six to eight feet tall and wide, which kind of makes me laugh. I'm sure we'll pop a picture up on the screen of what these look like when they're full grown here, but they can get like 12 to 15 feet tall and wide here in one season because they just do so well. The cool thing about these too is that their leaves, you can see how fine they are. It adds that really kind of fine feathery texture 
and you can use these in areas where Japanese maples won't work because they kind of take over that like crimson queen Japanese maple look, uh, but they can handle full sun, they can handle the wind and all of that sort of thing. They also bloom. So these are just forming their buds right here, but they get massive discs of light pink to white blooms that if you have a pollinator planted nearby, which a pollinator for a black lace would be like uh, black beauty, um, instant karma, something like that, then they will have berries on them as well. Uh, and the birds are attracted to these plants. They're just an overall tough, amazing plant. And this one, I think we're gonna be putting out in the South Garden. We have a couple already growing and I, I need to have more out there. And the third shrub here, I'm just gonna pull it right over here, closer to me. This is a barberry. And I know that barberries are restricted in a lot of different states because they are termed an invasive type of shrub. They aren't here uh, where we are at. This one though is sterile. I'm not sure that you can still even get it in those states where barberries are restricted, but this isn't an invasive type. This is a Sunjoy Toto barberry that only grows about one and a half to two feet tall and wide. So super great if you're wanting to create, so this is one I'm not going to plant today because I do have several. If you're wanting to create like a very low, interesting hedge, I think this would be a really good one to do it with and it would be a different look than like, you know, boxwoods or something. We use a lot of boxwoods around here. In our last garden, I did a hedge of, what was the variety? Wasn't this one? Anyway, I think I might try something like that uh, just because, you know, I'm not gonna have to do very much maintenance and it's not gonna overgrow its space very quickly or at all <laughs> with how big the uh, mature size is. This one is a zone six through eight, which is pretty narrow in the zone department, to be honest. Usually I see like five through eight. Um, so I was surprised when I was uh, looking at that zone and uh, when I saw that. Moving on to perennials, let me pull this one forward. First perennial is the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, which I have showed you before because I've got it in a couple areas of our garden. The thing I love the most about this plant, well, it's gorgeous. I mean, look at these blooms. Look at the burgundy leaves. It does have some kind of green tinge to some of the leaves too, but as they age, they do deepen. But we only touch this plant once a year. We cut it back in late winter, early spring, and that is it. The rest of the year, they just do their thing and we don't have to mess with them, which is so amazing. Um, so after that, we cut them back, they start, you know, growing from the bottom there and they just look really pretty, just like these nice big mounds of leaves. And then they shoot up these stalks about like early to midsummer is their bloom time. And then of course the blooms are really pretty. I love that light lavender with kind of a white, it's like a lighter colored interior of the flower. So it kind of has a glow quality, but I think it's really a beautiful color up against the dark leaves and the dark stems. So not only are you getting that depth of color from the leaves, but the stems are also beautiful and they look super pretty in the winter. So after the flowers are done, seed heads form and they are beautiful. They don't spread all over the place. They just kind of are contained. And I like to use the um, seed heads in flower arrangements more than I actually like to use the flowers in flower arrangements. So they're just a wonderful plant. Zone three through eight and they attract bees and hummingbirds. Next perennial is right here. Look at this hookera. Oh, this is so big. This is called dressed up evening gown. It's a new one this year. I showed you the dressed up ball gown, which is very similar to this one in terms of like growth habit and that sort of thing, but it's the green version. And I used that one along with a red Japanese maple in a container by our kind of back kitchen entrance and everything's doing really well in that container. So this one, huge dark purple leaves. Zone, I think four through nine on this one, but I love the bloom color. So they come out with these pink buds and then they open up to creamy colored flowers. I love that. I don't, you know, I like a lot of hookahs, but some of them have very bright blooms, which in some cases it looks really good. In other cases, I feel like it kind of detracts from the foliage a little bit, uh, which like with some of the green ones, that's okay. You kind of want that bright color, but I don't want to be distracted from seeing how beautiful the leaves are on this plant. And I feel like this is just a compliment to how beautiful the leaves are. These I'm not going to plant today. I think I'm going to, uh, use these in a container project later on. They start blooming about early through midsummer and the blooms do attract pollinators. But this is one of the plants along with the next two we're gonna talk about that are very versatile in terms of light requirements. They can do sun or shade in most climates. Here where we're at, you know, high desert, it's dry and hot for a lot of the season. 
very inconsistent cloud cover. They do benefit from a little bit of protection in the afternoon. We could put them in a more sunny spot, but we'd have to water them a lot more, and that's typically not something that we want to do. So a little bit more of a protected spot is really good for these here anyway. So that brings me to our last two plants, which are both coleus in the Color Blaze series. We have Newly Noir and Wicked Witch. This variety has been out longer, so I have grown it more. I have more experience with this one. Uh, this one, was it new last year? I think it was. But you can see the difference in color. We've got the really pretty dark purple leaves here. This one has the green margin, which brings a little pop of light. But just like the hookera, these can do sun or shade. The more sun they get, I find the more water they do require. Uh, and they do want to get a little bit bigger if they get more light. So they'll typically be anywhere from like two and a half to three feet tall and wide. I mean, pretty good size annuals. And they will form, their stems are like trunks. They get super thick and just an amazing grower. The Color Blaze series, any of the coleus in that series are bred to not either not bloom at all or they wait until close to the end of the season to start blooming because typically we're not we're not growing coleus for the blooms we're growing them for their leaves and if they do start to bloom which i do on occasion have one that will throw out a bloom i'll just go pop that off it tends to make the plant look a little bit more messy so it's nice to have ones that you're not having to deadhead all season long so that is pretty much it for the details on all of these plants there are so many different options out there you guys these are just a a very small handful of what I have gathered together to do some projects around the house. Uh, and I was just very excited to share them with you. So I hope it's helpful just to kind of get you started. I mean, when you're out at your local garden center, keep your eyes open for, you know, color like this to add to your landscape because it really does add a hugely needed element, I think, in a lot of different spaces. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, I think what we're gonna plant is the Red Obelisk Beach, the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, and then one of these coleus. So let's go do that, and then I will tour you through where they ended up. <laughs> Is it running right now? <laughs> uh, looks like it. Got it all planted and you know when you plant something and you think yes that was the right thing to plant there that is how i felt about everything today so let's take a look so right at the opening here of the west side you can see two of the things the red obelisk beach and the midnight masquerade penstemon so five of them ended up here five of them down the way so we'll walk down there in a second 
but I absolutely love this beech tree right here. I think it was the exact right thing to put in this space. I didn't want anything that was too bright that would like kind of scream at you, but I needed something that had that depth of color, which this completely does. And it's such a slow grower that it's just gonna be a wonderful ornamental kind of accent tree in this area. Uh, the thing about this spot, I had a Showtime crab apple planted just to the right of where the beach is. In fact, it lined up like dead center with this sidewalk and it died and I couldn't figure out why because everything else is thriving in this area. Uh, so when I went back in with the beach, my initial reaction was to center it with the sidewalk again, but with how big this elderberry has gotten, it kind of forces you to pop it over there to the left a bit, kind of in between the rose and the elderberry but I think it looks really appropriate there. So what I'm gonna do, you know, if you kind of stand back in the driveway area, I'm gonna place like a little pot or a statue or something kind of dead center or a really beautiful uh, plant that's a little bit brighter right in the area as just a kind of a pretty vista to stop your eye. But I just love how everything is coming together in this spot. Uh, let's kind of walk this way. We've got white ones, Veronica, Coral Charm, Peony, uh, Cat's Pajamas, Nepeta, look at how fabulous that perennial is. I love it. Iris, delphiniums. There are some royal jubilee roses in here which will get upwards of like four to five feet tall so that will bring a little bit more height but I'm being, being pretty careful in this area because I don't want to overshadow the urns. I want those to be the tallest thing in this bed. Other than I've got a few things you know on the end here and down here that you know as you get to the end we get taller but for the bulk of this area where the urns are I want to keep everything kind of medium height and shorter uh, so like I said the roses will be up higher and then we'll graduate down lower so we've got um, ladies mantle here and then the luminary backlight flocks and pink profusion salvia we just planted those the other day and then there is our penstemon isn't that perfect because even though it's got the medium height there it's more of an airy because it shoots up the bloom stalks instead of being super leafy up top. And you can see the pillar, you know, the pedestal. And I mean, they will thicken up, uh, but the color is perfect right there. I just think they're so pretty. And I'm just noticing all the <laughs> pollinators on this salvia. See all the honeybees? That's awesome. So when I start my next perennial, which I'm not exactly sure which one it's going to be, it'll be something, you know, about this high. That's where it'll mature and I want to kind of go around the base of this pedestal to where you can kind of still see it and then we'll do a, a shorter, maybe like a ground cover type plant right here. Okay, let's walk to the other end. It's a warm day today, you guys. We've got Spirea and Delphiniums. Planted the um, Phlox and the Veronica the other day as well. And then there's our next grouping of Penstemon. Looking beautiful right there. There's a viburnum, uh, some other things that we recently planted. We've got some more roses. These are Mary Rose here, four by four. And let me show you down this way because we've got more penstemon down here. Look at these instant karma elderberries. Isn't that the most glorious shape you have about ever seen? I love how this plant grows when you can just let it do its thing. Oh, and I've got three down here. There's one, two, and then there's one tucked behind this area. Uh, but if we keep going this way, you can see like where the red is here. So that's a royal frost birch, and that brings that depth of color, that interest. And we've got more midnight masquerade penstemon right here, which I was looking this over the other day because I couldn't figure out if I lost one right there, but I don't think I ever planted one here. I planted a rose. <laughs> I need to trim some of this as a black cat pussy willow which I'm actually considering moving uh, because there's a lot of the same texture in here see there's another instant karma we've got a spring snow crab apple which I'm going to trim up so it's a little bit more tree like and then I kind of want to do something different right here maybe something blue evergreen smallish anyway yeah so I was looking over here thinking that maybe I needed to plant another one in here but with that rose I might have to do a little rework I've also got a nine bark right back in here that's a ginger wine so it's nice that that's not green because it provides a little bit of a visual difference, a little more interest there. Okay, walking back this way, you can see the penstemon from this angle. Just slowly filling it in, little pockets here and there. Oh, this spot right here is just so pretty. Now with that vertical, that red obelisk, it's just perfection. And I love the colors that went in the containers along with everything else in these beds. Okay, let's head to where I planted the coleus. So right here by our kitchen entrance, I actually have a couple of pots I need to fill. 
but I popped the coleus right back in this area. You can see it kind of scattered through here. There's 10 of them there. This has been an incredibly interesting flower bed. In fact, a couple of changes that are gonna come really soon. All of these pavers, the concrete's gonna be torn up uh, and replaced with brick. And then this is gonna be taken out and we're gonna put a stack stone wall in here uh, so that it kind of marries with everything else on our property a little bit better. But it's interesting in terms of light. Uh, so in the morning, sun comes up over here it's pretty much shaded until really late in the afternoon and then it gets blasted with hot afternoon sun, but only for a short time. So I've tried lots of different things in here. Bee balm, which I can see a little bit like remnants of it. We've had daisies in here. Uh, what else? Salvia? No, Veronica that fizzled out. Uh, so I've just tried a few different things. A few things have taken, like the lamb's ear has taken, which is great. I have some little lime hydrangeas in here that struggled with chlorosis a little bit in this spot. And then I do have hookerellas, which look great now, but they burn toward the end of the season. It's just a little too much sun for them. The columbine though, this is fantastic. It's kind of bright, sorry about that. Like shade the plants so you can see the detail but they're such beautiful colors. And then right here on, it turns to shade. So a lot of the plants do well here. We've got birch hybrid campanula that's about ready to burst into full bloom. It's got sweet purple flowers and you can see all the buds. It's cascading down the side of the rock right here. And then there's lungwort and um, hostas, hookerellas in here that just do fantastic. It's just this one little pocket in here. So what I'm gonna do in this space is pop a few double up pink begonias. I think that they'll do okay. I think they can handle the small amount of light even though it's intense. And then the newly noir coleus back in here will get quite a bit bigger. And since it's a sun or shade both, I think it will thrive in this space, hopefully. In this area too, we've got a Japanese anemone that just, <laughs> <laughs> it's it likes to take over it's a runner it runs all over the place but you know some areas I want it to do that like I want it to look a little bit more natural and soft uh, but I do have more midnight masquerade penstemon right here this is the first time I planted it my first experience with it I love it I planted six in here you can kind of still see one two three four five six I need to pull some anemone away from that sixth one um, but you can see kind of their growth habit they're very well behaved. They just kind of clump out and do their thing and deepen in color as the season goes by. And that is it for plants with purple leaves. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it inspired you maybe to go out and plant something with that beautiful deep color in your flower beds. And it's fun to fill in all of the familiar spots that I'm used to planting every year, either with annuals or you know trying out different perennials. But the West Side Garden in particular has been such a joy because I feel like, I mean, it took a few years to really have an idea click and work in that space. But ever since I started in with kind of the color scheme we're going with and the plants that we have it just is so much fun i told aaron today i just want to fill it up i just want to fill it up right now and be able to do a slow walkthrough tour because i know in my mind what i want it to look like in the end it's just a matter of time and getting all the plants you guys know how it goes it's it takes a while for a space to evolve but i'm really loving how it's coming together so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye